Today, we're going to talk about Jerome Bruner. And as I discussed Jerome Bruner, there are three terms that you should write down and be able to define and provide examples for at the end of this lecture. Those three terms are constructivism, which is something you already know something about, spiral curriculum, which is something that Jerome Bruner developed, and discovery learning, which is also another term that Jerome Bruner created to describe how teachers should teach their content. Let's get started. For Bruner, the purpose of education is not to impart knowledge, but rather to facilitate a child's thinking and problem solving skills, which can then be transferred to a range of situations. Specifically, education should also develop symbolic thinking in children. In a 1960 text, The Process of Education, Bruner's main premise was that students are active learners who construct their own knowledge. Constructivism. Let's shift to spiral curriculum. Bruner opposed Piaget's notion of readiness. Teachers were applying Piagetian theory to their teaching and deciding that there were some things that students were simply not ready for. He argued, rather Bruner argued, that schools waste time trying to match the complexity of subject material to a child's cognitive stage of development. This means students are held back by teachers as certain topics are deemed too difficult to understand and must be taught when the teacher believes the child has reached the appropriate state of cognitive maturity. Bruner adopts a different view and believes a child of any age is capable of understanding complex information. We begin with the hypothesis that any subject can be taught effectively in some intellectually honest form to any child at any stage of development. The point to remember is in some intellectually honest form. Bruner doesn't suggest that you try to teach a child something um, at a symbolic level that they're not ready for, but does say that they that there is some way to engage them in that complex information as long as you do it in an intellectually honest form. Bruner explained how this was possible through the concept of the spiral curriculum. This involved information being structured so that complex ideas can be taught at a simplified level first, and then revisited at more complex levels later on. Therefore, subjects would be taught at levels of gradually increasing difficulty, hence the spiral analogy. Ideally, teaching his way should lead children to being able to solve problems by themselves. Bruner, therefore, advocated for the use of spiral curricula with continuous repetition of the same fundamental ideas. The curriculum is comprised of three characteristics. Students revisit the same topic at regular intervals. The complexity of the topic increases with each revisit. The new learning has a relationship with previous learning. Teachers also use scaffolding, a term coined by Bruner. Teachers do this by structuring activities based on students' existing knowledge and in a way that helps them to reach the desired learning outcome. The so scaffolding is a term that we learned when we talked about Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. Here we discover that the term actually first came about with Bruner and then was applied to Vygotsky's theory. Let's get back to our lecture. We're on to discovery learning. So how do you get children to start with complex information at a more simplified level and then keep revisiting it at more and more complex levels with this spiral curriculum? Well, Bruner said that you do that through discovery learning. Bruner proposes that learners construct their own knowledge and do this by organizing and categorizing information using a coding system. Bruner believed that the most effective way to develop a coding system is to discover it rather than being told it by the teacher. 
The concept of discovery learning implies that students construct their own knowledge for themselves, also known as constructivist approach. The role of the teacher should not be to teach information by rote learning, but instead to facilitate the learning process. This means that a good teacher will design lessons that help students discover the relationship between bits of information. This is a key point of discovery learning. A good teacher will design lessons that help students discover the relationship between bits of information. So the teacher doesn't tell them the relationships, they create an opportunity for children to discover them. To do this, a teacher must give students the information they need, but without organizing it for them. The use of the spiral curriculum can aid the process of discovery learning. To the learning model. Discovery learning is a type of instruction where students interact with the environment while drawing upon prior knowledge and their own experiences. Discovery learning is an approach to inquiry-based learning where questions are first posed to students and then students must find answers using their own reasoning. Discovery learning should come with a variety of different instructional techniques, many of which we'll cover shortly, but these techniques are based on the principle of learning by exploring. Discovery learning is often credited to Jerome Brunner. However, his ideas were aligned to the work of others in the field, such as John Dewey. So So there was a, an introduction to discovery learning that gave you some words to help you define it. It's inquiry-based learning. It includes lots of different instructional techniques. And it's a way to have students interact with the environment while they draw on their prior knowledge and their own experiences. Let's look at some characteristics of discovery learning. with beginners. The next section is a look at some of the characteristics of discovery learning. This learning model incorporates a hands-on learning approach. Educators can design tasks that require students to build and create as a way to demonstrate knowledge. Learners are encouraged to ask questions to the teacher. The teacher is there as a facilitator of learning. And as a facilitator of learning, there should be minimal teacher involvement. Students are to do and learn on their own, not depend on the teacher. Assessment should not be based on memorization. Memorization is the lowest form of learning and discovery learning is meant to be a higher order thinking process. Lastly, the model focuses on reasoning with students being required to use deduction principles in order to find solutions and complete tasks. So some characteristics of discovery learning include hands-on lessons, encourage questions, minimal teacher involvement, not a lot of memorization, and focus on engaging the children on reasoning the, pro reasoning the problem themselves. So now it's your turn to think about what do you know about constructivism as it relates to Jerome Bruner? Can you define the spiral curriculum and provide an example of it that you may have experienced in music or that you believe teachers provide in music? And can you define discovery learning? And can you provide an example of how you've experienced it or a suggestion of how it might be used? That's it.